hello 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 welcome here we are again i'm doing more masked diffusion uh we got uh today we're gonna play with uh animated masks and what they do in the forum and then uh, we're going to jump over to pika labs discord and we're going to play with their new um encrypt text and encrypt image features so uh um similar to this mass diffusion where i was just generating images with regular stable diffusion and then animating them with pika um, pika has actually added a cool like thing where you can just do it yourself with a few different fonts and a few other things right in the prompt so we're going to try that out and see what it looks like and uh, see what we can do with it. Um, but first, I'm going to do some um, deform animations um, using uh, Stable Diffusion uh, control net uh, with the um, uh, the QR code control net. So like uh, animations like these, bees, for instance, um, they're animated by using masks uh like black and white uh, animations texture animations to uh drive the diffusion of the uh, image itself so uh it would have like a mask that looks like uh let me pull one up real quick mask that looks like hello i have too many files give me one moment here we go <clears throat> it just occurred to me this might be loud we'll see no you're off very right, cool uh and you are also off great all right so the mask here is what's driving the diffusion um so you just imagine that overlaid over the image and then uh you know the image is being animated based on what this driving image looks like i have a tutorial on how to make these and whoops and uh other stuff like that uh it's a uh, live stream i did not last time but the time before so uh, if you want to learn more about uh how it all works and how to do it yourself we can do that but otherwise i'm just going to jump right into making some uh, i've already made the masks so uh, let's mess around and see what we get slide over to chrome this is the forum here we are in uh, automatic 1111 uh, so uh quick overview of the settings we're gonna go hybrid video after generation generate input frames uh you don't need this checkbox we're going to do optical flow far and back video depth and then in the hybrid schedules we're going to change the alpha schedule to zero so what this is going to do is use the uh input video to drive the um optical flow around the edges but it will not take on the uh color of the uh image that we're making so um basically like we're, we're able to use the motion but it won't make it black and white uh, it won't it won't impose that black and white uh, vibe over it if you have your alpha schedule at zero. And then as with hybrid video, you go back to your init video prompt, you paste your prompt in. So in my case, I'm going to go to the folder where I made them all and I'm going to grab that one I just showed. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. You right click on it, copy as path, paste that path into here. Uh, I think I got an extra space here somehow. Does that file have a space in it? It does. All right, one sec. There we go. Oh, okay. That's very weird. Let's try that anyway. Uh, you and then control net, enable control net. Uh, we don't need a preprocessor for this. Use QR code monster, which uh, the link to it is in the description below if you want to download it. Oh, hey, thank you. Nice. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, I try to kind of bumble through this stuff, but uh, hopefully people can pick up some fun stuff to play with. Uh, the weight schedule for control net is 0 0.8. Uh, let's try 80% for the how much control net uh, affects the weight of the image. Uh, for a prompt, because this is a... The input video we're using looks like... One sec, looks like this. So let's try to do something that radiates up from the bottom, like smoke or fire or clouds or uh, something like that. All right. So let's try... Um, sunrise on a beautiful beach seagulls uh clouds and sunshine we don't need to worry about the keyframes because we have an init video uh, it'll just do the length of the initial video we're going to leave it at 512 by 512 and 25 steps on euler a so that the animations are a lot faster for 
YouTube. If you want better looking ones, you can try different samplers at higher rates and see what you get. But I find Euler A or Euler A, however you say it, uh, it's able to get coherence in as little as five to ten steps. So it's good to use for something where you're using uh, a strength of uh, 80 uh, in our case. So we're only using 20% of this run. So we're only going to get 20% of these frames, which is like five so we're the, it'll be like a five-step animation. So we want to get a sampler that's going to be able to resolve at a step count that low. Um, if I were to pick something like uh, DPM-2SA Keras, the one I like, I would probably crank the steps up to 50, 60, maybe even as high as 100, so I get 20 steps so that we're getting a nice resolution before the uh, things happen. But again, that'll take four times as long to render. So let's just go back to Euler A and mess around and you can mess around with all that stuff at home because uh, you know it makes for better runs sometimes sometimes it doesn't um, I'm actually gonna turn this strength down to seven I want the frames to change a bit more often and we're gonna use a cadence of two which means it's gonna render a frame and then it's gonna interpolate and skip a frame and then it's gonna render the next frame uh, it makes for smoother animations when we're using these masks otherwise they're incredibly flickery at one they look cool but they flicker a lot uh, everything else is set up. We're going to change the output FPS to 24 frames per second and click upscale. We don't need to interpolate, but we can. Uh, so we go film. Let's do slow-mo and just two by two. And that should generate a uh, uh, 12 frame per second animation and interpolate the frames together and make it smooth. So we can see what it looks like when it's done. Uh, you can also tell it to upscale, uh, interpolate the upscaled video, but that takes a lot longer. So for the brevity of the stream i'm going to leave it just upscale or just interpolating the 512 by 512 version i believe that's all the things let's run one what did i mess up ah yes control net generate input frames that's all good schedules in a new village. video path does not exist okay see temp that's funny that all these files have a space in front of them i wonder why that is well, let's change this file name to wave up and let's grab the path. I must have typoed them in Blender. And control net. Oh, that's why. You have to add it to control net as well. I missed that step. Uh, the video has to be in control and input video image path as well. Yeah, I'll try that one next. Night sky. Paint. Uh, actually, let me switch OBS so that I'm sharing my screen. That way, when I preview them, you'll actually be able to see them and whatnot. Uh, boop, and boop, and uh, there we go. Wrong display. There we go. We'll zoom that and cut this off. Perfect. Now I can do stuff where I can preview it and you can see it. Uh, where were we? As you can see, we get pretty smooth motion getting lots of things changing. It's a little flickery, but because we have the um, the cadence set to two, we're getting like uh, some nice motion uh, in between. If you have the cadence set to one, they would flicker even more. And if we increase the strength, it will be less. Um, increase the strength, it'll change less, but it'll get a little overbaked. So we'll, we'll try one with 0 0.8 after, um, so you can see what I'm talking about there. Boing, 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 boing. Please feel free to put on some tunes of your own. Uh, I'm just not playing music on the stream so that it doesn't get copy stricken later. Um, but yeah, pop some tunes on and vibe out. I've got some lo-fi on in the background. And uh, yeah. hopefully it's not coming through. I think my desktop audio is muted. Right on. All right, we can see how this looks. There's something really cool about uh, simple geometry in nature. Normally I get about 12 iterations per second. I um, wonder why it's at 9. So we're doing about 8, well not about, we're doing 8 steps per image. So out of 25 it does uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm so dumb. 25 minus 8. 17 uh, steps are done by the original image that comes before it, and then the remaining eight steps are dreamed. So it only actually has to dream eight steps per frame. Uh, if you had your strength at uh, zero, 
it would ignore the first frame and just generate an entire new image for each frame. So like the way to form works is it grabs the frame before and then it mixes it with the dream of the new frame. And you can change the prompt, you can schedule everything else. So you can change this stuff, make it react to beats, make it react to um, just BPM, time, uh, all that stuff. This one's almost done and then it will upscale and then it will interpolate. Right now it is making the video, upscaling the video, and then it will do an interpolation run, which takes a little while. But then we'll see what the slow motion looks like. I'm going to guess it's just going to be like a slideshow, like very flickery and not, not super awesome. But uh, yeah, I'll try it out. So now it's interpolating the uh, source images. Uh, if you had it set to upscale mode, it would interpolate the upscaled frames uh, and it would take, um, I don't know if it's twice as long or four times as long for double the resolution, but it takes longer. <laughs> 277. All right, cool. It's making the video and now we can have a look ski at what it's done. This is the anatomy of a deforum run. Uh, we got the frames, all the PNG files. And then all the options for the video are recorded as MP4s. We have our control net input frames, the hybrid video input frames, uh, interpolated frames, and the upscaled frames. So when you're done, you can actually like erase a bunch of this. You don't actually need any of this stuff anymore. And if you're not going to use the original images and you only want the video, you can really delete these two. It'll save you a bunch of space. But the way it's set up, it leaves lots of options. So let's check out the upscaled version. It's pretty nice. Looks good. Let's check out the slow-mo version. That's actually pretty good. We got some nice motion, got some nice flow. And twice as long, which is good for social media. A lot of flickering as the stuff changes, but because of the motion, it's kind of cool. It's like it's just pushing it out of the way. And of course, the original video, which should look a lot like the upscaled one, just lower quality. <clears throat> All right, let's try Van Gogh. So I'm just going to increase my strength by just a little bit here. Let's go 75. So it can only do black and white, uh, and they have to be like constant black and white. Otherwise, you get uh, uh, lots of blur. It, it interprets gradients and uh, like grayscale stuff as blurry. Um, so you could use it to blur sections of the area, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't work exactly like that. But this is just the control net QR code control net stuff I'm talking about. If you do uh, complex animations, there's lots of other ways to do control net stuff, depth and uh, canny, line art, uh, all that stuff. You can use those in, in various stacks to drive the video. So like I've got a bunch of animations that I've done with just motion graphics from Blender as the input and uh, using that to drive the animations and it works great. But uh, this particular method, the one we're using today with QR codes, has to be a black and white constant image. No uh, ease, no gradient, no anything. This one's pretty cool. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, to preview, I use a program called uh, DJV. Um, it lets you, you could just uh, right click on any PNG file and open it with uh, DJV and then just hit spacebar and it'll play it back for you um, so you can see. Uh, what you got before it's done, which is great for uh, iteration, because if your run sucks, you can just stop it. This is really cool. This one came out really, really good. Excited to see what the final result looks like. And just for um, uh, understanding the speed, I have a 3090. So this is, um, this is on a 3090. So if you have uh, 3060, 3070, 3080, it'll just be a little bit slower. Uh, but you should still be able to do all this stuff. Um, you don't need. You only need more than eight gigabytes of VRAM when you want to do SDXL or uh, stable warp fusion. Uh, sometimes training your own stuff, you need more than eight gigabytes. But uh, if you have eight gigabytes of VRAM, you can do all this stuff with uh, 3060, 3070, 4060, 4070, all that stuff. I just got the 3090 to have the 24 gigs of VRAM to give me more headroom to play with the big, the bigger toys. But now a lot of that stuff's available on the cloud, so yeah, if I would only recommend getting a 3090 or a 4090 if you're really, really want to like get deep into the research and trying uh, brand new stuff. Uh, otherwise, you can just use online tools for most of this. Save your money, buy some credit somewhere. Drinking my extra large coffee in my stably diffused apartment. Do you like my apartment? I'm going to try and do a different apartment every stream. 
It's fake. Oh, look at this cool sectioning that's going on here. Let's have a look. Ski. Uh, open with DJV. Oh, yeah, that is cool as hell. Good prompt idea. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just new stuff on the walls. Let's add a VLC, and we're just going to keep adding the animations we make today to it, and I'm going to put it in the corner so they're just constantly running. Uh, AISD, web UI, uh, outputs, image to image. All right, what have we made today? We made this one and this one. Well, it's not done yet, so we'll add that after. Oop, and, whoa, I think I got it backwards here. There we go. Nope, that's okay. Yeah, I'll post it to my Discord if you want to join there. Drop it over in the main chat. Uh, uh, general. SD, you, there it is. <clears throat> is it done? It is. Let's have a look at the final. That's really cool. All right, let me add that to the play box. Add files. There we go. Uh, let's slide over to Blender and make a new mask. Because these are getting kind of boring. Let's do this from scratch. Add a plane. Uh, move your camera to zero. Rotation to zero. Pull the camera up above the plane. And change the perspective type. The type to orthographic. The scale to two. And... Um, I, you know what? I'm going to make some tall videos. Uh, I've been wanting to make some like uh, Instagram style videos. So let's go um, 1080 by uh, 1920. But uh, instead, let's go 720 by 1280 because we don't actually need super duper duper high res for this. So that should perfectly catch the edges. Yep, we're good to go. All right. So let's uh, go to the plane, add a material, an emissive material. Get rid of all the stuff around the edges. We'll go to the world. We'll change the background color to black. Then uh, in camera mode, we will turn the viewport display passport toe all the way up. So then we just see what we're making. And finally, go to color management in uh, the render window and change it from filmic to standard in view transform. And that will give you a black and white image you can get started with. Back to our material, let's pull this over, add ourselves a shader editor, right at the sidebar by hitting N, drag this over, scroll this up, and here we are. This is our environment we can build shaders with. So color ramp, add that, and now we have a black and white color ramp. We're gonna change it to constant because as I said, gradients are not our friend in this certain setup. Black and white, 50% of each, so. This is our simple thing. We're going to add a simple texture. Let's add a texture. Let's do a Voronoi texture. Yes, we're going to do a F1, smooth F1. Uh, I'm going to turn the smoothness down so that they're connected, but not super connected. And uh, I think we're going to add a math node. We are going to add a wave texture. And plug that into the math node. And we are going to animate our phase offset 280 frames like the other ones. Phase offset 0 to tau, T-A-U, tau. Now we'll turn off our viewport denoising, and then it'll look a lot better. And then we will add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. And we'll switch to object mode so that it's centered in the middle. Simple mapping, simple thing. Five. Now, anything we change uh, in any of these will still keep us having a perfect loop the whole time. Um, so you can just go in and start playing with stuff, changing things, messing with uh, values. That one's interesting. I'm gonna change you to Z. Rings. Yeah. Interesting. That's starting to look like something. So now we can use this. Um, this animation to drive the uh, the diffusion. 
Uh, I like that it's going in, but I think I would prefer that it goes out. So instead of animating to tau, all I have to do is animate to negative tau. And then mouse over the thing you want to change, press I, and then uh, that'll uh, set the keyframe. So now it's going to go out instead of going in. Um, it's also a little slow. So instead of negative tau, I'm going to go negative tau times two. And that should make for a more compelling animation. Oh. Hey, Tequila Guru. Yes, this is Blender. Uh, we are blending currently, making a mask, and then we're going to take that mask into Stable Diffusion and make an animation with it. Um, cool part about this is you can actually use random stuff again. You can, uh, again, you can play with any of these, any of these, and it will, the animation will always uh, loop perfectly. Let's go with five where we started. That might be cool, the way the little balls, like, bonk into each other boink 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 yes i think that's cool uh don't be afraid to change the math value functions too to subtract to to multiply to whatever um you know, different things do different things uh if you're doing something like subtract and you're not getting what you want out of it feel free to add another math node drop it in here and you can use add to like increase or decrease the effect so just find your your super happy thing the, this will always loop as long as this is going from zero to tau or tau times two or tau times three tau times four um ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doo, yeah so uh let's go back to where we were i think we were an ad yeah this is fine uh i'm gonna use this animation i like it um uh it prefers having a black background and white action so right now this is backwards so all we have to actually do is just move this to here move this back so now where it's black nothing's going to happen where it's white things are going to happen um one cool th or one thing to remember is try to make sure you don't have any time when it's just all black you have to have a little bit of motion at all times um in this case we can increase and decrease that by playing with the scale of the wave texture so the the higher the scale the more chance there's going to be things happening you know all the time but you also want to find that happy medium where it's not too much motion too much stuff happening because that will also break the effect so maybe this is the way to go yeah i mean you can do this all day unless you commit to something you're you know is what it is so let's get some action yeah that's cool i'm gonna just say it's done and i'm gonna render it so see temp we're gonna call this one instagram um I don't know, circle, wave, out. And we don't need the PNG files for this. We only need the video. So we can go to FFmpeg video, encoding, change it from Matt Strodka, which is an MKV file, to MPEG4, and change your output quality to perceptually lossless. Uh, that'll give you the best settings for uh, video exports from Blender. Render, uh, render animation. Uh, oh, I guess you can't see that. One sec. There we go. Blender. So up to render and then render animation. It's going to spit the the animation out right quick. Oh, yeah. Let's try that. Psychedelic tie-dye. Uh, doing these type of animations is pretty quick on any GPU, really. Uh, EV is fast. Um, if they were Cycles animations, it would take longer. But, uh, yeah, we're just using EV. Um, well, Cycles is fast for this stuff. But if you wanted, like... You don't need any of the path tracing stuff because this literally just needs black and white values. Okay, so I have a feeling this one's actually going to be kind of glitchy, but let's let's try it out. So we'll go with the width of 720. Is that divisible by 8? No, it is not. So let's go 704-ish and 1280. It's one thing to check with when you're using these is you're, you've selected a, a resolution that you have to hit up or down to get the right values. If it's the wrong uh, number, if it's not one of these numbers, it will break uh, when you use control net. So we're going to use the one that's closest to the value. We did 720, so 704 is closer than 768. So let's try 704. Uh, 25 steps. We'll keep everything the same. Uh, and then we're going to try a uh, psychedelic rainbow tie-dye uh, goopy liquid paint. Let's try that. Uh, da -da. hybrid video everything else is set the way it was set before Outputs all fine let's hit it now this animation is going to take longer because it's got a higher resolution but uh results should be pretty cool so let's see oh you know what we didn't do we didn't change the the video that we're using as the input so we're going to go over to the video we just made 
which is in here. And we're going to right click on the video, copy as path, and then paste it into the two places, our control net input video and our init video init. Uh, image in it. You don't actually have to do this. I just do it because I'm my uh, anal. Just turn your strength all the way down to zero and generate. Old habit from something Deforum used to do. Okay, this should be using our new mask and it will take. This thing is guessing about 10 minutes to render. This number is usually closer to correct, but uh, we'll see. So we're just going to let this one render and I'm going to slide over to Pika and we're going to play with their new tool, their new toys. Um, yeah, this one's looking good. I think it'll be a cool one. All right, let me get over to Pika. Is this Pika? Is this Pika? Is this Pika? Pika. There's Pika. All right, let's go to Pika and generate one. Actually, I wonder if I can just use the bot like this. Hello, bot friend. Um, so encrypt, yep, encrypt text. Let's do um, hello. And the prompt is uh, waving trees in the jungle. Okay, oh, we can add an image, that's cool. Play with that after. How do I erase that? Go away, please. I think I broke it. And font, oh, okay, we can pick our font. Let's try Baja's font. Uh, I really wish I hadn't clicked image because I think I broke it. So let's try that again, encrypt text. The message is hello. The prompt is waving trees in the jungle. And the font is Bauhaus. Let's try that. Boop. So you can sign up for Pika for free. The link's in my uh, uh, description below. And you can uh, just play with this stuff yourself. Uh, no worries. Um, I'll just bounce back and forth. See how our animation's doing. Maybe I should move you over here. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Whoa, that's looking trippy. Let's see what the uh, preview looks like. Yep, I think this one's going to be pretty cool. Like goopy tie-dye spider webs. Oh, that's cool. So that was the encrypt text function. We got hello in the trees. And we got some camera movement. Let's try encrypt text purrs. And the prompt... Uh, Adorable teddy bear playing a guitar in the forest. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Let's try that. One day I'll have all these OBS overviews set up properly. One day. Yeah, it's really fun. I don't work there or anything. I just, I just like it. I kind of see purrs a little bit. I do like this guitar, this sort of double neck situation we got going on here. Kind of cool. Oh, you can really see it when it's small. The larger it is, it's harder to see, but it's a lot easier to see when it's small. So that's one thing about uh, this is like the having the ability to invert it is really good. So when you're doing this with stable diffusion, when you make the images, uh, you have the power to invert them. So hopefully Pika will allow that at some point uh, for the images that we upload um, to be able to just uh, have an invert flag to uh, invert the colors on the input image because sometimes having the text white and the background black is a completely different composition than the other way around. Um, darker stuff moves less, a lighter stuff moves more. Um, yeah, etc. All right, let's try uh, encrypt text. Um, I wonder how like big the word can be, or if it can be like a phrase. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I feel like this is just going to be goo. Uh, a quick brown fox jumping over a lazy dog. Ah, 20 or fewer characters, that explains it. So, whoops, okay, let's try encrypt text, dog go. And we'll do adorable puppy, puppies. Let's have a look at our animation. How's it doing? A lot slower than the other one, but it's coming along. Uh, go away, Blender. There it is. And let's check the preview. Well, this is pretty cool. I don't know what it is about streaming. It always makes me yawn. I'm not tired. I'm drinking a giant coffee. 
If you see me yawning, try not to yawn. It's not intentional. <laughs> Doggo. Encrypt text. Prompt adorable kittens. It is 3.45 here in the afternoon. I'm on that New York time. I'm not in New York, but same time as New York. All right. Well, this is going. Let's make a mask. That's been the nicest part of uh, uh, the new command in Pika is encrypt text and encrypt image. So with encrypt text, you can uh, just type the text you want to add. And then with encrypt image, you can upload a mask. I think you can upload a mask with the text as well, but I'm not sure how that works exactly. Maybe it, I don't know, maybe, oh, it probably, it probably tries to put the mask into the image you've made and then animate with it. <laughs> Cute. So oh, now I'm curious, encrypt text. So art cops and we'll do uh, Miami Vice. Um, can I do camera zoom out? Let's see if the camera's stuff works with the encrypt text. Oh, no worries. Uh, this is, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's on Pika, and uh, they added, uh, uh, where are we? Yeah, they, they added like uh, like a QR code thing, basically, uh, where you, there's like five fonts, and you can put in text, or you can upload your own masks with uh, encrypt image. So you it's similar to the Illusion Diffusion Hugging Facebook, but then you get all the motion from Pika as well. So it's pretty cool. So if you uploaded like a spiral mask and then you asked it for like a, a sunset, it would be like a moving spiral sunset. You know what? I bet you I could add the terminal window uh, to the... Oh no, I forgot the terminal window thing capture doesn't work in uh, OBS. Whoops. Discord. <laughs> Art cops. Yeah, okay, so it's definitely the camera controls work too. That's cool. Uh, let me get Discord back up. Sorry about that. Uh, Discord, where were we? Yeah, Art Cops. Um, as with anything in uh, Pika, if you go encrypt text, uh, you click the little thingy, you do your thing. So the message, we go uh, um, world peace, and then the prompt is uh, war, uh, Soldiers fighting. Uh, you see this plus two more? You can click font and pick your font. And then uh, the other one is to upload an image for um, the prompt itself. All right. How is our animation doing? Ooh, not too bad. Almost done-ish. I think because of how long these take, I'll save the tall ones for later when I'm alone, <laughs> but uh, we'll go back to square ones because they're faster. Um, we can get our results quicker and see what we're working on. But, uh, so while this one finishes, let's jump over to Blender. Let's change our camera resolution to, I've been doing 1024 by 1024 for these. Um, um, there's a bunch of node groups available, um, like FX nodes uh, and a few other ones. I'm going to use some of those in this. Uh, these are not stock blender nodes, but you can just buy the pack. I believe it's 15 bucks worth every penny. Uh, it's called FX nodes. It's available on Gumroad. Let's get the link. All right. I'm going to drop that link into the chat. So this is what I use for a lot of my uh, textures, patterns, and uh, mapping nodes to get uh, cool looking patterns in my textures. It just extends the abilities of blender stuff out to you know those of us who don't completely understand the math so we got our wave texture i can remove the voronoi texture our wave texture this might actually explain what's going on a little better this wave texture is just going to do this forever so we can add stuff into this subtract it divide it ping pong modulo all that stuff and because this animation is always happening whatever else we add into it will always happen over the course of the same time so we can add a grid into this uh if you plug in the vector, you'll have the same uh, object mapping. And now we have a grid that's being pulled open by this circle, the, the thing, which is quite extensible, as you can imagine. Now, this the detail on this would be too fine, probably, for what we're working on. Maybe not, but it'll probably just be glitchy. That might work. 
but yeah, basically, you know, you can you can start messing around, and you can also add nodes before and after the case. Add another math node, plug something else into it. We can add another grid. Really break this up. Scale one grid on top of the other. All of a sudden, we get some really cool possibilities here. So this one, the scale is at 32. This one, the scale is at 16. So we could even add in a, another one where the scale is eight. And then we get really fun stuff. Yeah, you can... Uh, uh, yeah, the the... Noise isn't really the issue. Adding anything that isn't just black or white will add blur. So if you wanted the edges to be blurry, you could do that. Uh, but there's other control nets other than QR code for all this stuff. So ideally for that, you would want to use like a, a depth control net or line art control net or a combination of the two to get blurry edges and stuff like that. The stuff I'm doing today is literally just QR code monster. I'm going to remove all these grids. I hate them. Tell them I hate them. Let's go back to this. Another cool thing about the wave texture is you can use distortion. And because it's a, a cyclical wave, um, no matter how weird it gets, it's always going to perfectly loop. Whoa. Just jamming here, seeing what's going on. Yeah, they do. Oh, this might be cool. Let's try this. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, let's call this uh, a reverse whirlpool. All right. Oh, animation's done. Let's have a look at it. Well, that's pretty cool. I think it could even go twice as fast. It's very organic. Gloopy. Gloopy. All right. Uh, where were we? Okay, let's get this back to 512 by 512. Control net. We'll go back to where we just made our image, this thing. Copy as path. Paste. Paste. As you can imagine, you get pretty quick with the workflow after a little while. Um, let's try... Let's try uh, an Art Deco one. Oh, hey, Haiti. Thanks for coming by. I'd love to see what you do with this stuff. Psychedelic rainbow tie dye goopy liquid paint. 24. Where are we? Let's turn off the interpolation because I don't care anymore. It's just wasting time. None. Uh, just skip, make, blah, 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 blah. You're good, you're good, you're good. Run. Two. 75 is good. Oh, I did a dumb. Forgot to turn off the motion. This should look better now. Good, 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 good. All right, let's try that. Oh, we didn't prompt it. Um, let's try um, Art Deco uh, architecture. Uh, 1970s mid modern buildings. I think this one's going to be cool. Wobbly and trippy. I'm going to jump back over to Pika, see what we're doing there. <laughs> what did I say? World peace? Uh, kind of reads. So yeah, these are cool. Um, I, I think I still get better results just making my images in um, control net first uh, and then bringing them into Pika, but uh, it's so handy to be able to just be able to drop words in there if you want. So let's encrypt the word satisfying into a GUI liquid animation with the camera rotating clockwise. Uh, Pika added uh, camera controls not too long ago. They're super cool. Oh, you're just seeing my whole Discord window. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Pika's really good at water and, uh, like, uh, yeah, anything that's just, like, anything that's liquid or organic or uh, stuff swaying in the trees and things like that. It's really good at all that. Uh, did I go to the wrong window somehow? Okay, I think that'll fix it. I don't know. Oh, yeah, big time. Actually, um, I have a plug-in for uh, Blender that does camera control stuff. Uh, you can get it here. Purs, Beats, Blender. I swear I had a link for it. GitHub, Purs, Blender, Camera. 
Maybe they took it down. Projects, repos. There it is, Splendor AI keyframe. Key so with this, you can actually um, make uh, make your camera movements in Blender and then import them into Deforum. It'll create, it'll generate a keyframe uh, keyframe strings for your camera controls uh, based on what your camera is doing in the scene, or based on whatever whatever is doing in the scene. You can make a make a box expand to the beat and then use that and export the camera controls to get the exact right uh, animation type type thing you're looking for. Uh, let's see satisfying <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah like i said it's really good at motion of like uh liquid and uh like goo and and stuff like that it didn't seem to rotate at all so maybe the camera rotate clockwise strange how's the animation looking almost done with the high strength you see how we get a lot of this noise dither pattern that'll happen when your strength is high um but the other side of that was when your strength is too low it's very flickery and it changes too much so um you know pick the devil <laughs> the devil you want the upscaler does a pretty good job uh like the built-in one of just sort of like making it into a texture instead of just like dithered noise but uh yeah that's what causes this sort of overbaked texture look is uh, having your strength too high and no movement in that area. So um, uh, you could turn your strength down, but it gets more flickery, or you can just try another run. Uh, I'm going to turn my strength down to 7, 70%. I'm going to run another one, but I'm going to do, um, let's try, uh, I mean, I do love pizza and sushi. That's pretty much my go-to. So let's try a delicious pepperoni pizza. Yeah, let's try a delicious pepperoni pizza that rotates. Is it possible to pick a different prompt for each color? Sort of. That's actually what QR code does. Like you'll notice where it's black, it's doing one thing. Where it's white, it's doing something else. Um, I believe there are layers for automatic 1111 and extensions that allow you to do true mask diffusion. Pardon me. I keep yawning. Allow you to do true mask diffusion where you can say, where it's red, I want cars. Where it's green, I want trees. Where it's blue, I want sky. Where it's, you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so yes i think it's possible but i don't know how and i haven't really played with it much so i think that's called masked diffusion or multi-diffusion um but i'm not quite sure how to actually control it and how to use it and i've never uh, really tried uh, beyond what this qr code control net is doing where it's just sort of prompting two different things for the black and white areas but they're sort of tangentially related to the prompt at large versus the multi-diffusion stuff where you would actually literally be able to say, I want the blue stuff to be water all the time. That would be great because then you could do a simple block out in Blender, run a camera through it, and then just diffuse to your heart's content until you get a scene you really like. Uh, I don't like those white pepperonis. They need to go back in the oven. Pika, where'd you go? Hey, waterfall. All right, let's try one of our masks with Pika's mask engine because I haven't tried that yet. Encrypt image. Uh, let's do um, vibrant, lush jungle scene with one of my masks, which, uh, where are they? Download. Come get your fractal pizza. Mmm, yummy. I love how burnt the crust gets over time. Then it just turns into more of the table. If your food is doing this, do not consume it. Do not consume it. You will get sick. That's pretty cool. Let's do that same prompt. I'll try that same prompt, but um, camera, uh, zoom out, well, out paint. Yeah, I really like the way the QR code control net in particular uh, separates the black and white stuff. Like it's, uh, yeah, it's very cool. Um, other control nets are really good at masking stuff off. Like you can get poses and faces and, and all kinds of things to match, but... 
this is a whole other way of of tripping the AI into dreaming into weird spots. Lovely, lovely, lovely pizza. I really, really hate the, I really hate the white, uh, really hate the white pepperonis. Not a fan. Uh, I'm just going to assume it's some kind of turkey. Uh, and then it turns into salami, of course. All right. Well, pizza was cool. What if we do dangerous whirlpool, stormy weather, clouds, lightning, cumulonimbus, heavy rain, turbulent wind, and uh, perfect storm. <laughs> Probably too much. Yeah, I think turning the strength down was the move. We'll get more more interesting uh, animations that way. Oh, cool. I mean, as you imagine, you just drop a company logo in there and you're off to the races, like uh, Nike swoosh. I want it the other way, yeah. I want it. Where are you, swoosh? Am I blind? Oh, it's an AVIF. Gross. We just want a simple Nike swoosh. Will this one work? No, it's an AVIF as well. Okay. Uh, I'll just invert this one, I guess. One cool thing is um, go to photop.com. You basically get uh, Photoshop for free. Um, where were we? No, Chrome. Yeah. Uh, photop.com. So all I want to do is invert the image, control I, export as PNG. And then it'll be in my downloads folder. So now I can go back to Pika, encrypt image. We're gonna add the Nike swoosh from our downloads folder. And the prompt will be a uh, field of corn swaying in the wind. So Nike corn shoes. Okay, and then uh, back to animation. Let's have a look at it. Uh, Nike animation, where'd you go? This animation thing. Downloads, ISD, here you are. JV. I think the motion is too slow. Um, so uh, one way to do that is to like increase the uh, the speed of the animation in Blender. So we got this animation, which is nice, but it is too slow. So how would I speed it up? I would go into my phase offset, and instead of tau times two, uh, let's try negative tau times four. So now it should be twice as fast as it was, and it should do some cool stuff. All right, export, uh, render animation, cool. Uh, and let's try that. All right, uh, text image, whoops. Let's go back to Photon, forum. I'm gonna interrupt this one because it's too slow. Oops, did I just overwrite my video? I think I did. Yeah, magic. I would have broke the animation anyway. All right, well, actually, no, I wouldn't have, but that's okay. Pixel perfect. Hybrid video. Blah blah blah. You're all good. In it, same video because I replaced it. And let's try. How about uh, generative art? Spray paint on concrete. Spray paint on concrete. Uh, graffiti. Uh, solar system. Spray paint on concrete. Now, what does this error mean? Given groups one, weight size of 32833, expected input, blah, 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 to have eight channels. We've got nine channels instead. Uh, 2D mode, that's all good. Uh, hybrid video, all this stuff is the same as it was. Control net, maybe it is, pixel perfect is not the way to go. That's the only thing I changed. Oh, interesting. 512 by 512. Keyframe's the same. Strength is 0 0.7. Did I mess up the prompt no knit path is fine is there something wrong with the video perhaps render it one more time maybe i tried to run it before the video was done rendering or something boop okay render videos rendered monster reverse whirlpool oh i wonder if it's because like the input images aren't the same as the thing because it thinks it's the same video as it was before so let's try this, add dash two to it, 280 dash two, init dash two. 
Weird. Huh. Run to forum. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to restart. Uh, let's go over here. Kill this. Start it up again. All right. And we're back. Try running it again. Sometimes just reboot, <laughs> restart, uh, automatic. Uh, clearly something got messed up there. Oh, no, no, never mind, never mind, never mind. So it's got to be these settings. I don't know what I messed up, but at some point I must have messed something up. Uh, let's copy his path, make sure that's right, make sure that's right. Nothing changed. Okay, let's start over. 127001, blah, 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 blah. To forum, seven, motion one. Prompts, that was generative art, uh, uh, graffiti, solar system, oh, solar system, uh, spray paint on concrete. All right, and then in it is this, control net monster eight, and then control net path is that, hybrid video after generation, input, generate input frames, not first frame, optical flow, far and back, Video depth and zero of what 24 upscale run now that is just crazy is it the is it the video itself 1024 by 1024 everything's fine interesting let's try a different video copy his path why so broken Well, something is definitely broken, and I don't know what. See, Tempex Flower, blah, blah, blah. 0 0.7. Zoom is 1. Am I out of hard drive space, maybe? Well, I don't get it. All right, let's Google it. Oh, I know why. I know why. I know why. I know why. Whoops, that one didn't work at all. Interesting. Oh, yes, it did. You can see the Nike swoop in the air a little bit. That's cool. All right. Uh, go away, Blender. Yeah, that's why. It's the wrong um, wrong model. <laughs> Dumb. So we can go back to their new video that we made because it'll definitely work. Copy as path. And it. Video in it. You. Run. Yeah, let's try that. Wait. Awesome. Okay. I have been streaming for over an hour and a half. Uh, stand up, stretch your legs. I'm going to take a little stand up, stretch my legs break and uh, put on some videos while this one renders. I'll be back in about five minutes. Bye-bye. Oh, perfect timing. It's just finishing now. All right. All right. Let's see. What's it look like? Uh, let's see. AISD thing. Yeah, that's a good speed. That is trippy as hell. <laughs> I like when this planet like goes whoop. Uh, yeah, this one. Whoop. That's great. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, those look cool. Let's run another one and make a mask while we do it. Uh, prompt. I just had an ADHD moment there. MC Asher. Is that how you spell that? Yeah. Tessellations. That's a cool one. Stairs. Uh, intricate maze. Labyrinth. Spirals. Let's see if we get a cool quantum realm. All right, let's get over to Blender and make something cool. Hit the little shield to save and then hit this little button here to add a new material. So 
every time you make one, you can go back to them. And this will duplicate the settings when you hit this button. And this one saves it. So now we can delete the spiral. And if I want to spiral back, I go back to this material. My new material, I can get to work. Easy peasy. All right, let's get a new pattern in there. Like, uh, I don't know. Simplex grid? Yeah, hit it. All right. Ooh, this might be cool. I think this one will be glitchy, but I think it'll look cool. Interesting. Yeah, you see every time... Oh, you can't see my mouse cursor. One sec. Maybe I can fix that. Yeah, okay. Uh, everywhere you see, like here, watch when these close up. You see how they close up right here? And yeah, where my mouse is right now. Watch when those little things, the white overtakes the black and they close up. That causes a glitch. I don't know why, but it does. So what will probably happen is this will have like rings of glitches around it. So let's test my theory. I'm going to call this uh, hex hexagonal gears uh, simplex. No, I'm going to call it simplex gears. Yeah, everywhere that it sort of these little spots get folded in, there will probably be glitches. I'm thinking like a nuclear reactor or something for this one will be the way to go. Render, render, render. Oh, this one's going to be cool. Let's check it out. Okay, mm -hmm. and then DJV. It's a little too like hand drawn, I think, for my taste, but it's pretty trippy. For some reason, this stuff looks really cool with like photography. I'm going to interrupt this one. It's all right. It's not my favorite. <clears throat> Where's my hex gears? There you are. Copy link. Paste. Paste. All right. Let's try. Uh, what did I say I wanted to try with this one? Nuclear reactor, toxic waste, uh, glowing uh, valves and gauges, uh, nuclear atomic machinery. Let's try that. Oh, uh, let's try. Uh, uh, photography, uh, Fuji film, 35 millimeter lens, camera words, uh, and, uh, realistic vision instead of, um, photon. Maybe we can get some cool old Russian nuclear type looking stuff. Whoa. Oh, probably the glowing gauges. Uh, you know what? Forget the nuclear stuff. I think I know what to do. Watch, timepiece, mechanical, timekeeper, clock, uh, internal, gears. Doesn't look real. Photograph, uh, 35 millimeter lens, Fujifilm. Still doesn't look like a photo, but whatever. Let's see what it does. Might need more steps, different sampler. It's hard to say without jamming more on it. See if it's glitchy or blurry. See if my theory was anywhere near reality or not. Not too glitchy, actually. Interesting. Looks cool, though. How do I loop it? There we go. It's definitely blurry. What if that's because the motion is too fast? What's the scale? That's kind of cool. Before we do that, though, let's save that, make a new material, then mess with it. That's pretty cool. No, I like this one better. That's trippy. That might make for some interesting movement. Because remember, only the white stuff's going to change. Let's try that one. It's an inverted one. <clears throat> Do -do -do -do. This one's pretty cool. It'd be cool to do like a really long one of this. It's so satisfying to watch the stuff change, but like with patterns ooh interesting interesting hmm hmm <laughs> interesting I wonder. 
Hmm. Why? Oh, because you're not running into the wave texture. Right. I guess I can't get them both. That's fine. What's the mask? I bet that'll look cool as shit. Let's do that. Uh, call you gooey gears. <sighs> flash, flash, flash. All right. Uh, how did this make out? Yeah, I really like watching that. I love all the weird words in it. Yeah, that would be a good pre pre stream clock for sure. Okay, so that's kicked. That's good. That's done. And now let's put. Let's go to the folder temp. Grab the animation. Copy as path. And where's the forum? Yep. And control net. And the prompt is flowing lava down a rocky mount rocky volcano uh eruption uh ash and fog let's try that crazy you can really see the simplex grid in it because the black stuff never changes so you get like a really uniform edges only the white stuff's changing um La, 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 la. Let's see what it looks like. Not ah, Photoshop. The oldest version of Photoshop ever. Go away, please, Photoshop. I'm begging you. I made a mistake. Ah, that's pretty cool. What happens if you mix... Interesting. Let's just add them. Now, why is that? I got to think this through. Ah, oh, that's why. That's why. I'm dumb. Okay. There we go. And then, so X and Y. Oh, that's weird. They don't, you'd think they would fight with each other more. So these ones are going X and these ones are going Y, but they're not, they don't seem to be doing what I want them to do. Oh, that's interesting. A little hard on the eyes. Math. Oh, I see why. Yeah, no. That's so weird. Why is that happening? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Because I'm dumb. Got to animate them both. <laughs> Things I thought I did in my head for 500, Alex. Okay. What? Uh, rings. Is he... Whoa. Okay, that's interesting. So one thing I could do then is make a value and plug it into the scale and the scale and then add a math node that multiplies it by two. And then whenever I, yeah, and then we can, oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, and then, so I think it's point 0.5. Yeah, that is trippy. Okay, and go here. Value goes here. Oh, that's neat. We can sign or the triangle. Too harsh. It's kind of nice. They're both uh, triangle. We get the hard cuts. No sign. Yeah, goopy's better than hard cuts. Point seven five. That's interesting. Hmm. That might be kind of neat. Right, let's try that. Wobble rings, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just used to do it like that. I do this a lot in Blender anyway, so kind of like this is the workflow I'm most comfortable with, but you could totally do this in After Effects too. <clears throat> My problem with After Effects is it's just so slow. Super powerful though. No doubt about that. Oh, lava's done. Let's check that out. Lava, where are you? That's really cool. It like keeps that triangle simplex pattern pretty uh, coherently throughout the whole thing, but you get lots of motion in between them. Trippy. Yeah. Right, it's like whenever you're out of hard drive space, just check your After Effects cache folder. It's always the problem. All right, uh, temp. 
Got the path. I'm gonna try the same prompt, but with this video, see what we get. Did I do that right? That's what I need. Copy as path. Based. Based. I'm yeah, not rocky. Let's just try flowing lava. Well, that's insane looking. <laughs> just let that run. Creepy. Let's kill the threads. Whoa, okay. Trippy. Trippy, trippy, trippy. Maybe too much detail, but we'll see. Interesting. How does it add? Right. And then chill on the distortion. Ooh. That might be interesting. More white. Oh. That should be up and down. Oh, okay. That's cool. I like the different types of motion. We got like three stacked speeds of motion going on here. Like, same thing sideways. Center, we get the cut. Or a triangle. Ooh, I like that. That feels more organic. <clears throat> okay. Call this one a throb ring. It feels like it's throbbing. Oh, got some unwanted darkness here. Wonder why. Always never don't throw more RAM at the problem. Maybe too much motion in this one. It doesn't seem to know what to alleviate or to accent. The center looks cool though. I'm gonna let it run. It's almost done. Let's try that Nike swoosh again. Create, no, encrypt the image. And then downloads. Oops, Nike. Where'd you go, Pika? There you go. Ah. Oh, super annoying. And then, uh, beautiful sunset, Miami Beach, uh, camera, zoom in, because we got room. Okay, uh, let's get that video out of the temp folder. Uh, copy as path, paste, paste. Uh, let's try new prompts. Oh, I wonder if that was weird because it wasn't on pixel perfect mode. Curious. Right on. Yeah, because you could just, like, once you got a cool animation, you could just copy it, like the mask input, like, copy it, like, seven or eight times and then make, like, three-minute videos of the same animation over and over again, but diffusing new stuff every time. I barely see it. Let's try it the other one we've had, the actual white on black one. Uh, encrypt image. This one. Same thing. Uh, beautiful sunset, Miami Beach, camera zoom in. All right. How's this look? Strippy. That's cool. Yeah, I have to do some super long ones of these. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's cool. Don't they have to play with it some more? The uh, yeah, the encrypt image and encrypt uh, text is really fun. All right, let's check out this last animation, <clears throat> and then I think I'm gonna call it a day. But if you wanna run through this process again, this video or the one two before it, uh, I go through this whole process in painstaking detail. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, on Discord, etc., etc., and uh, yeah, we'll chat it up. Stuff's really fun.
uh, image to image images and um, there it is and let's have a look at it that's really cool I think with a higher strength we get more coherent stuff but I actually really like the sort of zaniness of it it's really cool again nature and geometry so awesome all right well I'm gonna call it a night that's a good stream for me everybody have a good one and it was super nice hanging out and I will see you very soon I'll probably be back on in a day or two depending on the schedule thanks for coming out <laughs>